Thank you for downloading this podcast from the Forum for Philosophy. Subscribe for weekly discussions of science, culture, politics and the arts from a philosophical perspective. The Forum is a non-profit organisation and our events are free and open to all. You can support our work via our website and Facebook page. Welcome to this Forum for Philosophy event, the first one of the new term. Um, my name is Danielle Sands. I'm a fellow at the Forum and I'm going to be chairing this evening's event where we will be asking, what's the point of critique? So we have two speakers this evening. Uh, Frida Beckman is Professor of Comparative Literature at Stockholm University and Tom Boland is Senior Lecturer in Sociology at University College Cork. So, Frida, perhaps you could start us off. What is critique and where did it come from? Well, that's obviously a few <laughs> huge questions. Um, and uh, I think part of our position here will have to be that we cannot answer it because then we're not doing critique. But I'll, 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 I'll give it a go. And I think to first to try to answer the question, what is critique? Um, I, I presume that an important uh, thing is to try to differentiate between critique and and criticism and just being, just not liking stuff or whatever, right? So, so for something to be critique, I would say that there are two um, key um, characteristics. And the first one would be that a, critical, a critique must also be critical towards its own position, right? So um, uh, critiquing something, you, you need to, begin also by wondering what you might know. It's a question of judgment and knowledge. Who am I to, uh, to perform this critique? What do I know about this topic? What prejudice might, may I have? What knowledge do I have? Do I have maybe a political or religious conviction that it lies behind us? That kind of thing. So critique needs to always, always to be self-critical as well. And the other point uh, I would like to emphasize is that critique is is systematic and, and, and tends to look at broader perspectives. So um, critiquing, for example, um, a particular, I have three teenagers at home, um, so I know that critiquing or being critical to your parents might be a thing you want to do when you're at that age. Mm -hmm. But for it to be a critique, to not just be angry at your mum for not doing this, this or doing that, you, you, what you could do uh, would be to be, have a critique of parenthood or motherhood. You would look at the construction of um, how, how parents and children are uh, configured at various points in time uh, in terms of power, or expectations, gender, whatnot. So that, that would be a difference then, that it's, it's a critique if you look at not just a single person or a single phenomenon, but also at how that person or phenomenon fits into a larger structure. Your, your children sometimes turn around and say things like, so you're merely raising us and giving us food in order that you'll support, you get the support in your retirement. Do they unmask you as an exploiter and oppressor of, of, of children in their critiques? Um, of course, they're raised by academics, so they would, uh, uh, of course, be prepared to not just be critical of their, uh, you know, when they need to be home uh, uh -huh. at night, but also of what the nature of motherhood and childhood yeah. would be. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's like going too far to start. It's like you're going too far to start off. Yeah. I mean, to me, there, there's sort of two meanings of critique, and the, the 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 Greek thing about kritikos and a judge, and simply to to give an appreciation or a criticism that is an evaluation, is relatively unproblematic because we're always evaluating. People are evaluating us right now, or could they have spent their time differently, or is there any point in the philosophy? forum or something like that and being critical at judging things but then there's that form of critique where you say well there's something else going on underneath and that metaphor of depth that deep underneath the structures of the LSE there's an attempt to I don't know do whatever. We are deep underneath the LSE. I are think, we? Literally. Oh well, good 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 good. Uh, underneath the surface the surface appearance may be that you know such and such is going on but look it's actually bourgeois reproduction of knowledge or something like that and mm. we're very suspicious that, that, that something like that is, is, is going on. And that's, um, I think that's where, I don't know, those, those, where critique becomes problematic, is you can't avoid 
judging. You can't avoid having interpretations or evaluations, but there's a sort of a limitlessness. I mean, if, if, if parenthood can't be trusted, and, and your parents, your, your children will eventually turn out, I have children too, they haven't done this to me yet, but I'm sure that they Is will. Is that going to be the recurring theme of the evening? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But you know, if, 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 you find, if you find that there's a dark conspiracy lurking underneath everything, you know, maybe, that, maybe that's where the, 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 the problem is and where the limits of critique uh, are Absolutely, found. and especially in a context like this, I would say, because for, for critique, uh, uh, an absolutely central dimension of critique, at least as it's been understood historically and philosophically, is that it needs to be performed in public. And mm. it needs to be a way of thinking together um, because you can't do it on your own, because on your own, you're kind of caught up in your own, um, mm. you can only think, I mean, you can, you can of course evaluate your own thinking, but you need, it f mm. need for it to always be tested against other people, mm. and to be a discussion you have t together. So, so in that sense, that the public and the public sphere is absolutely central. Mm. So what you're saying, if there are people here perhaps who would uh, uh, think that maybe this is some kind of conspiracy to brainwash, uh, the audience into this or that, then that, that's a, that's a mm. real concern because if the public space for thinking is infringed, mm. then that would be a real crisis uh, in critique. Mm. 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 So to go back to a, another big unanswerable question, um, where does critique come from? What, what are its origins? Well, we'd have to begin with Kant, I think, um, with the Enlightenment and the way he, and, and it's kind of seen as the beginning of the Enlightenment, so this is 18th century, and the beginning of the modern world in a way, because Kant had this, it doesn't seem so radical these days perhaps, but this, it was at the time a radical idea that everyone should think for themselves. Um, but also they should think for themselves and they need, again, they need to do it in public. So this was a very important dimension of creating a modern society. Yeah, uh, that that you sh that you need to think, but always also interrogate yourself. Then, because if you if you leave the responsibility for thinking with each of us, then we also need to. Then it's not we might not be able to get to that perfect truth that um, God or the King or someone else would uh, represent, because we're faulty and we're human. So so it's a, it's a very powerful beginning in a way of, of modernity. Mm. It's interesting because I mean it's really clear that the Enlightenment is this, this, this key time for it and I would, I would just sort of add to, add to that account by, and this, is, this sounds like a critique as I'm doing it because I'm discovering the secret behind Enlightenment but what I, I, what I think is quite important oddly enough, is religion, even though we usually spend most of our time criticising religion as a bunch of myths and stories or something like that, and that's, that's, that's you know, maybe uh, the Dawkins kind of, kind of it's the God delusion or something like that, and we criticise that as being, as being so silly. And yet, on the other hand, I would, I would think that the weirdest thing is there's nobody so evangelical as, as the likes of Dawkins, you know, riding around the world with the four horsemen of the apocalypse, convincing people that they're wrong. And that has a, a distinct religious her heritage, because if you go back to the Protestants, they said, you know, we must all think for ourselves, and they criticised the Catholic Church in, in public, and they, uh, they, they had to take that responsibility for forming your own opinion by, by reading the scriptures yourself, and protesting and, and, and making criticisms of the king as part of the English Revolution, to a great extent, less so, somewhat, somewhat the American Revolution. But if you if you if you go back even further, if you think of, of of even the word, which is so much, you know, we use this word about every book author. We say, an iconoclast. You know, that's that's what you want on the back of your the blurb of your book, right? <laughs> um, but iconoclast comes comes directly from um, the Old Testament. It means the breaker of images, and that's what Moses and all the chaps out in the desert, as the story goes, they turn up and they say, what are you doing worshipping these myths, these fatted calves or these statues of bulls and so on and so forth? And they said, no, that's, that's, that's rubbish. You've got to get away from that myth and see the real truth. Now, of course, the real truth they were telling was, some, it was more or less the same thing again. Um, just as much a story as anything else because it was about a sky god and all this kind of thing. But at the same time, I kind of think that there's an interesting an interesting sort of historical entanglement with religion and critique, and especially the, the zealotry of critique, the demand for revelation, which is again a hugely, mm -hmm. a hugely, a hugely Christian word. Um, so, 
Yeah, I think that that's I think that's very mm. important. There is there a tension there between um, critiques attempt to kind of break through dogmatism mm. and this kind of dogmatism that seems to creep back into the critical practice. Mm. Well, I think this might be one of the reasons why uh, why people are discussing it today, or people uh, uh, various academics uh, uh, have uh, been debating uh, whether we should leave critique behind and. Uh, I'm sure we're going to talk about that more um, later, but um, but w one of the problems people have identified is that if we end up just performing the same sort of theories, or the same theories that might have been quite critical uh, and uh, important, and they might still be, but if we just um, perform them without thinking and without continuing, then we're not really critical anymore. Anyway, mm. so we're so we need to, and it's the same with the, in, in religious context, of course. What you were describing, in a mm. way, is that it, the moment you stop and just accept something um, as if it is your truth, and you're not, and you're just going to repeat that viewpoint or that truth, mm. um, then uh, then you lose that um, constant kind of questioning that critique is, mm. and that would at least for for Kant would be. Uh, what we need to do to um, to get close to truth. Yeah. Um. No, I mean, I, I would really agree with you that there is there is a strange sort of thing whereby, when you think about about it today, we're educated to be critical, and there's there's the critical thinking exercises. That we're all educated to be logical and rational and think through these things and so on and so forth. And I think that we're also we're almost we're almost. You know, you could you could you could tell you could think about critique as being in itself a story or something that we're all, we're all told that heroic, key thinkers at particular times have thought these things, and it, you can you can sort of you can borrow their ideas, and then if you try them on, then you're critical too. And how is that any different from the, the from the absorption of, of of any kind of a culture? And yet, you know, it's sort of like the emperor's new clothes. Nobody nobody says to the critic who says Marx was right, or I mean. If, not that he wasn't or something like that, but you know, um, it's yeah. I mean, what what if what if critique was not special? You know, um, if it was just another, it's just another, just another identity marker or just another uh, dogma or something. But then, aren't way. you talking about it uh, in in a specific sense? Because to me, it seems like well, critique. If you think of critique as a particular theory or a particular discipline, mm. then then what you're saying applies. But if you think of it as a as a constant interrogation of what you're doing and what other people are doing, then how can we mm. how can we ever not do that? I mean, that seems like a completely dystopic and, and terrifying uh, future <laughs> if we're um, if if we stop doing that. Mm. So in that sense, I don't know how we could be post-critical. That would be like an episode of Black Mirror or something. Mm. But I think that's a really significant question, especially thinking about, well, first, the role that critique has played in philosophical history. Mm. Is it fair to say that, that critique is in some way the kind of the paradigmatic philosophical method? Yes. It is. There's, there's, the whole, there's the whole Greek, there's a, I mean, apart from the, the, we were doing a little bit of history, it's very popular history, you know, um, mm. the Old Testament and then, then, then the Greeks and Athens and Socrates and Aristotle with critique sort of, at this, at sort of a version of it anyway, an interrogation of thought. At the heart of uh, at the heart of the philosophical enterprise, um, I s yeah, and that that we can't we can't avoid doing that. It's interesting because then then we have this we have this phrase you know critique and you know what is critique and then we use this phrase and and it means it means somewhat different things. So if we have the the interrogation of our own position as as as, as critique or dialectic as it was in in, in or dialogue in, in, in Socrates or something like this. Is that the same as all the possible meanings of critique today? Because I mean, so much of the time it seems, and this is, yeah, this is a nice Terry Eagleton quote. He says, you know, ideology, it's like bad breath. The other person always has it, <laughs> not us, you know? And um, that, 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 that's, that's the thing, rather than interrogating our own thought and mm -hmm. interrogating our way of thinking as a culture, a lot of the time in critique, the, the, the drift is towards a sort of more antagonistic interrogation of the other person's position and how they are <laughs> they are illogical and their thought doesn't work out and their part and it's not us mm -hmm. but them you know so it, it's the this other directive so when you were talking at the start about how it's so important for it to be an internal <coughs> reflexive reflexive mm -hmm. is a big buzzword i suppose a while mm -hmm. uh, 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 some time ago but 
if maybe we, if we lose that or if, if critique becomes less of a philosophical exercise than, than, than a politicized or a weaponized to use that that new term you know mm -hmm. if critique becomes weaponized then does it lose something mm -hmm. of that reflexive character yeah one one of the problems that uh, that academics uh, have been discussing is that they're concerned that critique has become some sort of modus operandi uh, in in society in general and that these uh, um, the, the fake news and the alternative facts and the post truth and and, and the, the kind of systematic uh, deflation of um, claims like mm. uh, climate change deniers where like oh yeah we have we have these facts mm. but who have who has produced mm. them and it, it is there is that concern that critique has become a dangerous tool for uh, for fear mongers uh, but um, to me, it seems like the, 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 the enormous difference there, it's not that I think they have bad breath, uh, <laughs> which I might do, but it, but it is precisely that if it's employed as a political tool, mm. then even if it looks like critique, because it's some sort of questioning of everything, but it's, it's performed mm. with a particular political uh, agenda, and then it's, it mm. looks like critique, but it, but it isn't. Well, that's the tricky thing is like how would we tell the difference because it's it's like an almost an ancient greek pr problem how would you tell the difference between socrates and the sophist like i mean there's people um but well, i don't know if they're people they could be they could be bots for all we know but when there's a school shooting in america um, and it's quite horrific in a certain way uh, not just climate change denial as soon as the school shooting happens um people start saying no it's only a hoax this didn't really happen the government is trying to make you think this because the, uh, because they're trying to ban guns or something like that, and mm. uh, instant, you know, and it's clearly politicized. Politicized. It's quite dystopian in its own way. The limitlessness of the critique run amok, mm. rather than no critique is a terrible thing, but um, nothing but critique would be a, mm. would be a terrible thing. But it is tremendously difficult um, to discern precisely what would be the politicized critique, and what would be the philosophical or, or, or the good and bad of critique and how, how do you make the difference between those because everybody will claim that they are doing the reflexive thought and that the other person isn't and um, it's very easy to accuse the other of being mm. uh, politicized in their, in their critical leanings. Mm. Uh, I, I agree with you but I still think that uh, when uh, I mean looking for example at these sort of um, Macedonian troll factories that just uh, uh, keep producing uh, fake news to uh, to um, to affect uh, elections or whatever. Mm. I mean that that is a, a systematic. It's not a it's not a, a, a critique. It's mm. a way of unsettling the conditions for critique. I mm. would say, as I was saying a while ago, the question of the the public sphere and what we can know mm. and what we can critique and where. Because if we live um, in a uh, in a world where whatever we read, we are critical, we've mm. learned critical thinking, so we're thinking, is this true or not? Mm. But obviously it's come to a point where, like, so where do we need to read it for, it to, for us mm. to know that, that it is the truth, so, we can, so that we can then proceed to make judgment or mm. perform our critique? So it's, it's, a, it's certainly a, a difficult time for critique, mm. even it might always So just happen. to kind of check in here, it seems to me, Frida, that you're saying the problem is not with critique. The problem is labeling things which aren't really critique as critique. Um, mm. And actually those are things which are making critique less possible. Mm. Whereas on the other hand, you seem to be saying, well, maybe the problem is with critique. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a fair, a fair summary. It's, um, I suppose it's, it depends on the sort of critique, I suppose, because. Um, and the problem more generally is about kind of political uses of critique mm. and the, the ends that it's put to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, there's a, there's, there's maybe there's philosophical difficulties with critique as, as, as a whole idea, depending on which type we're talking about. Because when you get into sort of um, the idea of a sort of critique that would unmask and reveal, and that's, that's I think, I think that's, uh, we're, we're broadly, I think the left feminism civil rights, all these things have been committed to that, uh, the, the, the revelation that something else other than what's on the surface is, is, is happening. That's been so important uh, politically in modernity. I mean, the effects of socialism, the effects of, the effects of feminism, we live with them happily today. 
I think it is a very good thing that those critiques happened. But it's interesting that they happened through a sort of critique that wasn't, it was reflexive, it was uh, public, it, it existed in probably better conditions of the public sphere with a, 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 an easier relationship to truth. But it also, it, it proceeded by suggesting that there were deeper structures below the surface. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is one of the key things that critique in the modern sense, post Kant, definitely since Marx, really comes back to again and again, that there's an underlying depth. And the problem with that and the emancipation comes through exposing that. Yeah, and the, the, the problem with that is, is the emancipation by exposing is a trope and a story that's borrowed now by you know, Trump saying big government is bringing us down. There's this, there's this neo-lib, there's, no, sorry, a left wing, their liberal is a good thing. Liberal is sometimes a good thing, sometimes a bad thing, isn't it? It's a bit tricky, isn't it? But the, there's, a, there's a whole liberal uh, conspiracy by the establishment to show this uh, hogwash or this whitewash or this spin and so on and so forth. And he will tell the truth and reveal the truth. So he's borrowed that story very effectively. Mm -hmm. And he does it in such a way that it's obviously clownish and, and stupid. And I mentioned another leader of a local country who does the same sort of thing, you know, and, and, and that's terribly troubling. Now, we could, it, it, would be, it would be great if we could decide simply between the good critique and the bad critique, but I think that between, let's say, Do Donald Trump on the one hand, and I don't know who exactly, maybe Noam Chomsky does it reasonably well as a famous person, you know, but in the in-between, I think it gets quite grey and, 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 and complicated as, um, as different, different groups do... Uh, where we don't all agree mm -hmm. on the political issue, it's very difficult to have a non-contentious definition of critique that will work very well. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we've, we, are, we often retrospectively rationalize our decisions and say, well, they were, we came to them critically, and we've already made, very often, our moral or cultural decision on whether we not we, we value this, that, or the other sort of thing. And probably within this room, because it's a particular kind of room and a particular kind of audience and a particular kind of invitees, we'll probably find that there's a vast range of common ground. But eventually we'll find that there's some level of disagreement on a political or social or cultural or moral issue. And it'll, it'll be difficult, I think, mm -hmm. if, if, if we get to that. We won't come to blows, but we will not easily be able to define mm -hmm. which is the critical and which is the non-critical point of view. But it's also quite important to stick with that, uh, that grey, complicated, mm. I mean that that is kind of part of part of the point of critique as well, isn't it? The, the point of critique cannot be to come up with the final truth or answer. Mm. Then it's something else. So precisely, we need to, and that's kind of also what we would want to do is to dig out those differences. Mm. I mean, it looks like we're 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 in agreement, but mm. I'm sure Danielle would mm. <laughs> dig out those differences for us so we yeah. can do some hardcore critique here uh, but uh, I mean again it's um, but that it seems to be yeah. a slight difference that's coming out in mm. the two types of critique here so maybe the kind of Trumpian misuse of critique if you like does come up with a solution says yes look what I found this is the answer whereas the kind of good critique if we want to call it that is unfinishable mm. Mm. doesn't have an end or doesn't have a final end well if it I mean of course you're you're Articulating it quite sort of precisely at, 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 at this point, and and so, but but maybe that's a good starting point because it's, it's something to that effect. I want I don't want to say good and bad or right or wrong in mm. in, in that uh, in that kind of way, but I I do think that once it's turned into a sort of um, politicized uh, systematic weapon, mm. then then it has uh, it has uh, lost those things that are so central. Uh, mm to um, to critique in the in the first place so yeah and then of course there are, are thinkers of, of every um, uh, color and, and brand that would um, you know that would probably be quite dogmatic about their opinion including of course um, uh, left wing right wing mm. thinkers in various ways but of course then maybe what you what they are doing at a certain point in time is they, they have a critique but then they also have a polit political project that is grounded mm. in that critique Mm. But it's not, uh, it's not quite the same um, as, as the critique itself. And this is where I'm not sure, uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't want to assume things about what Trump thinks about. Uh, or does he think not, at all? Yeah, well, <laughs> that's how yeah. we could. Yeah. But, but, I mean, like, these, these are interesting, the, the kind of to, 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 um, to, to try and make these theoretical or, 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 or academic or definitional distinctions between these things is quite difficult and then 
you know, to, to, to raise a political issue that people would actually disagree about or that we would actually disagree about. I mean, I don't know. We haven't had a, <laughs> known you for, you know, for only so long. But, you know, s say, for instance, an issue which is probably not a well, a well, a, a, a widely discussed issue is, is, for instance, anthropocentrism or whether or not we should, we should eat other animals and this sort of thing. And, 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 you know, maybe we have different points of view on that. And I've, I've eaten some animals this week, you know, and um, others, others, others haven't. Is, 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 that, is that something that we could be critical about in terms of looking at its ecological uh, um, impact? We could look at it in that kind of way. But also somebody could say, well, listen, you know, Tom, you're really sort of anthropocentric. You think that humans matter so much that they should get to eat other animals, and you're mm -hmm. okay with that, and that's, that's a problem. And then there's that, that, that whole debate. We, won't, we don't even need to get to left and right and feminism and things like that before we get to a vegan uh, ecological mm -hmm. place of critique in which we, we could... And then is it... I feel like all conversations in January ultimately lead to the vegan question. <laughs> I thought it was alcohol. Whenever, whenever. I give you a left, a left field one or an unexpected one. There's a, there's a political party that says that all humans should be gotten rid of because we're very bad for the planet. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting point of view. And uh, they're quite critical. And they say that, you know, we think that we have a God-given right to the earth. Sorry, God-given. As it goes very well, actually, there, because in the Bible it says that God gave Adam and Eve the world or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, so is that is that a myth that we have that the world belongs to us? That even though we we say good thinking and right thinking, ecological things, but it's about sustainability. When we say sustainability, we mean for humans. Mm. You know, um, we often don't think about all these species who are going extinct every every week or something like that. Mm. And therefore, we could say, well, shouldn't we unmask each other as being anthropocentric or humanocentric thinkers? Now, would that be that we, we won't we won't all agree in this room or between each other and I'm not necessarily I don't have a clear opinion on it so I don't really necessarily want to have the debate but if we were to then unmask each other as being anthropocentric or the other person I don't know how we could, how we could respond to the person who says that maybe you could say that they are you know a, a deconstructionist of all culture or something or, or, or a nihilist or something like that and it, to accuse and to unmask the other person I think that that's from a certain point of view a problem I think that what, what, you're, uh, what you're talking about now can also be used as an example of a, a difference perhaps between critique and being and critical, mm. uh, because that example of veganism, for example, or whether you should um, fly to go, go abroad on planes, all, the, all these, the, these discussions, that, and, and that tend to be, uh, at least I don't know what your Facebook feeds look like, but it tends to be, it becomes a, a, a more of a personalized mm. sort of... Um, Accusation, mm. so say you eat animals. How how can you? That kind of thing, where or you you fly and you and and if that is a crit a, 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 a crit a, a, it's not a critique then, but a, a, a questioning of, of you, mm. um, then someone has a, has a, a critical um, critical idea about what you're doing. But for mm. it to be a critique, mm. right, then they need to see how you are just a, a cog. You're not like it's not your decisions aren't uh, what's no. going to change the world anyway. So maybe they would rather, if they wanted to perform a proper critique, look at how um, no. who decides on um, taxes for uh, for airplanes or who decides on uh, mm. the fact that we can uh, raise pigs in in factory farming. And you know maybe it's and it's mm. not about not taking responsibility yourself, but still uh, the need to position those decisions uh, in a mm. larger sort of structural mm. um, framework that's when yes. it becomes and that's what I find quite frustrating these days because it seems like so much of politics among just us general, regular people is on that sort of small small mm. individual level yeah. uh, and then again, it looks like critique because someone feels uh, so good and, and uh, political when they say, oh, you eat animals. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but they're not really uh, doing that much to um, mm. yeah. change the world. I, I just want to pick up on, on the word that you used, Tom, which I think is really useful here. You said unmasking. Mm. Um, and I think one of the challenges that's been um, posed to critique is this idea that it's a kind of, I think Falsky calls it a chronic negativity. Mm. This idea that it's just negative, um, it's just judgmental. Sometimes it's kind of triumphalist around it. Maybe this, aha, mm. I've caught you out, you're eating meat. Mm. Um, but is this a fair challenge, do you think? I want to say criticism. Um, 
But this idea that, that how can you build something using critique if it's mm. just this kind of um, ongoing negative gesture? Mm. Mm. I, I think mm. that that view, it's a common view that Felski and others share, but it's a completely um, mistaken view, actually, because, of course, on one level, it depends, to begin with, what you mean with negativity, but the point is, ultimately, yes, it's about unmasking, it's about uh, looking critically at structures, etc. But ultimately, the goal, if it's a, of course, if it's just about being negative, then that might not be very productive to anyone. But the, but the point of a critique would be to make something better, mm. ultimately. If, uh, I guess the opposite would be, we see enough of it these days, it's like... Uh, uh, self-help and mindfulness and uh, positive thinking mm -hmm. as if it, uh, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm being a bit um, facetious in a way but I, but I think it's an important distinction to make that uh, what is being negative versus being positive so mm -hmm. negativity if critique is negative which it is on one level because it's it's about interrogating and unmasking mm -hmm. uh, but the, the, the ultimate the, the point isn't about just being negative or hoping to pull everything down, and uh, so so mm. that it's an important question, I think, and an important point. It's like where where you see that negativity, on what level, and what mm. you see it generating or not. That sort of comes back to your point about the public or the sort of the quality of the public in which mm. critique happens, because this unmasking, you know, it really does often happen, sort of uh, tit for tat, tweedledum, tweedledee. Mm. If you say to somebody you eat meat or something like that, well then they'll say you're a pious liberal who can afford to not eat meat and mm. still have a healthy diet, whereas we the working classes or, or we who are not so privileged as you and you call the other person out for mm. whatever and it becomes this 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 arms race of un unmasking the other. Mm. But it, it, it's interesting because I mean, if, if we are to say that critique has to have a positive uh, attempt to, to, to fix things, uh, attempt to make things better in some way or another, it's, it's, it's um, I mean, it's not an unremitting negativity, but broadly speaking, it's, it sort of seems like negativity first and positivity last chapter of book, you know, mm. uh, where people come in at the end and say, if only there wasn't neoliberalism, then we'd fix this in mm. this way. And, and they only do it usually at the end. You have, and every now and then you'll get a book that says something like, you know, a, a whole a whole manifesto for say basic income or the three day week or something like that and or or, or, or sustainability but broadly speaking I, I sort of wandered around a few bookshops today and you know shelf after shelf was groaning with the weight of, of of an exposure of this that and the other a deconstruction of our traditional thing of this you know um, it, it was all about uh, suffering and delusion basically mm -hmm. you know it, it, uh, oppression domination injustice and how people are so ideologically uh, spoon-fed or something or ideologically brainwashed that they put up with this kind of thing and uh, I imagine that they had something positive to say about how things should be done better at the end um, so you're saying that critique has become a sort of default mode I suppose I suppose it's become endemic I think as well I mean like there's the way in which it's become it's become almost chronic, and, and, and I suppose the nature of the public sphere, not just the adversarialness of, of Facebook, but the, I mean, politics and the media set up, you know, you have one from the Red Party, one from the Blue Party, and they, you put them to fight with each other, so it becomes endemic in, in that kind of way. But it's interesting, if you think about the sorts of things that critics or critical theory generally says at the end of it, um, uh, the, the, the great hopes, the great ideals, they're often... This is going to be a critique of critique. No, go for I've, uh, <laughs> but you know, there's there's an extent to which you know. Say, for instance, I mean, to, to, to roll back to Kant and his his time, the um, the uh, the ideals of the French Revolution were like liberty, equality, and fraternity. Now, I'm not sure about fraternity, but liberty and equality, they're very interesting sort of they're sort of like post values. Like after society, there would be complete liberty, and the, we would we would have gotten rid of everything. Everything would be more or less over at that stage, you know, and, and complete, complete liberty and then com complete equality. Well, you know, what, what would that be? They're almost like, they're almost like utopian millennial sort of, sort of, sort of view. So the, the kind of, um, the kind of technical things like um, a three day working week or the welfare state or all of these, you know, these are, these are ways of governing better. And maybe that's, I think, the kind of ideal that we need at the end of critique is not so much, you know, the big horizon 
for the, uh, the, the, the ways of doing things less badly, mm -hmm. <laughs> at, 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 at the least. I, don't know what you think. I, I guess that um, I agree with you uh, to a point, and I think it, it, it must uh, depend a bit on what your, again, what your what the starting point is, if your aim with, because I can, I, I see what you mean in terms of that, like critique is everywhere and everything is just described as uh, sort of unmasking and, and negative and all that. And if you're, if you're, if the purpose of that is just to show everyone how bad it is, mm. you know, then yeah, maybe that's not, and, and it's, we're all doomed and it is no point, but at least uh, in, the, in, in the, in the tradition of critique, mm. um, and, and I'm thinking maybe also of the, Frankfurt School thinkers of the uh, 20, 30, 40s, uh, where like so there was a very strong critique of the way society was developing, mm. uh, but that was also performed with a very strong hope that it could be different, mm. uh, and it certainly took a blow in the in, <laughs> in the 40s, <laughs> but but they kept going, you know, mm. like the, so there is a there is a way in which you, well most of them um, in which you um, need to 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 keep believing in a sense and that critique is also mm. a, an, a, a utopian gesture in a way. But I think that's partly what you're criticizing, that it's too utopian. Mm -hmm. But actually if you're too utopian then you don't fix the broken door or whatever. You, you're looking up there and you don't fix the current problems. Mm. Is that, am, am I? I think, I mean, it's, uh, I'm not even sure what my opinion is. <laughs> I sort of sometimes criticize myself and I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure because I, I can see that there's an attraction and a difficulty with almost all of the things we could say about critique and, and it's, it's um, the interesting thing about the, you know, there's the utopian gesture and I think that maybe, maybe that uh, can be a problem in itself because it, it almost expects too much or it expects a post-social, post-cultural, post almost, you know, post-revolutionary. So nothing in the interim is ever good enough. So we shouldn't let the perfect be the enemy of, of, of the better or something like that. But on the other hand, it's interesting when you say we must believe in critique. We must keep, you know, it's like mm -hmm. we must keep faith with critique. It's quite a, quite a peculiar thing. Because what is it if we're, if we're all critics now? And, you know, when you ask, I, I ask sometimes in my classes, you know, who here is, 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 is a pawn and a dupe? And nobody puts up their hand. You know, and uh, who's who is easily led, and all the clever people then put up their hand because then, ha ha ha, you know, <laughs> they 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 have shown that they are the people who think for themselves, something like that. Maybe if we're to all be critics, well, what is that but in then, itself? Then it's important to go back to to those distinctions that was trying to make in the beginning as well, because yeah, we're all critics. That's not the same as believing in critique, because mm. being all critics, then yeah, that maybe that is about uh, just being negative or just to trying to. Uh, defend your own stance, whatever that might be. So mm. that that's not what I'm trying to to believe in. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that's a very p positive de uh, um, development uh, at all. Quite on mm. the contrary, it would be better if more people were just quiet and thought about it and maybe <laughs> worked. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying everyone should be quiet, but like not just automatically uh, um, reacting in the way you um, you would because you're you. Mm. Right, I'm thinking of, again all the, all these heated uh, um, conversations, if you can even call them conversations on Twitter mm. or Facebook mm. or whatever. Mm. Most of the time, that's not about uh, critique in the sense that people have thought very carefully about the whole taking in the whole picture and and they are pursuing a project that, that they hope will be um, generating good things in the future. It's about saying, you know, I'm better than you because I don't eat meat. Mm. Uh, mm. So yeah. so uh, it's really important to keep that in mind. I think that. At least when I, um, uh, the, the distinction between critique and, and everyone being mm. critics. Yeah, I mean it's it's, it's interesting because this um, the position you know you, you begin to take is, is, is on is on the one hand philosophically I see all these kind of thing problems with critique and yet I do critique I principally um, I, I I have sort of a, a bifurcated sort of world. So I do I do uh, the sociology of critique and and, and complex philosophical uh, questions about that. And on the other hand, I do the sociology of welfare and social policy and things like that. So I I, I, I try to write things criticizing the drift of welfare policy and saying we can do these things differently. And how could I possibly do that if I didn't believe in critique? Because I'm. But the interesting, the interesting part of what, 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 I, what I find is important about that is you can criticise, say for instance, I'm not sure if everybody's thrilled and excited by welfare policy, but 
Uh, we all know that it's become much harsher than it, than it used to be and that the welfare state is beginning to be dismantled in various ways. So you can criticise that and say that's a tremendously negative neoliberal development and you can say that's based on the mythology of the, 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 the importance of work or the mythology of the, the sponger or the shirker. And you can do all that critical work and that's very important. But it's interesting, in order to persuade people to do things differently, you also, I think, have to offer them some sorts of ideals. And so in that, you know, your ideas are things like solidarity and care and tolerance and, and respect for people's different decisions, which are, some of them are a bit socialist, some of them are slightly liberal, but they're all, they're all ideals. So I think that maybe we're getting around to the thing that you can't be just a critic, but you must be a critic, but also have clear, and they're always culturally specific ideals. They're not post-cultural or, 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 or non-cultural. So I think critics need, if they're, if they're going to be good critics, maybe they need some sort of ideas. But don't all the alt-right and the Trumps and the Johnsons and all these and the Bolsonaros, don't they have their ideals too? Mm. So <laughs> back in, back in confusion again. But it's, I think it's, it's uh, a, a very important thing to also keep in mind what you're saying in terms of a cri critique. That we can't have just critique. I mean, there must be uh, um, also that. And, and I don't see a contradiction. I think that's mm. what you're saying as well. Oh, absolutely. For, you to, for someone to, to, to do research into the possibility of having a, a three-day working week, they must also, I mean, maybe not themselves, but it must be grounded in some kind of critique of the way society mm. and the working week looks now and why that's bad for people and why that, why, you know, all those things that need to be be uh, sort of it's a kind of groundwork for then maybe having uh, those constructive um, suggestions. Mm. So so again, it seems like it's not about having critique or not having critique. It it, it must be about having those different dimensions of working towards a better life, a better society, um, mm. uh, work together in different ways. Mm. But th then then is there anything special about the about the critic or the critique because? Um, for, I mean, for certain liberal thinkers, um, we live in a plural public and everybody has their different point of view and none of them are particularly special because everybody has their own ideological or political commitments. And so is there any, th is there any particular role for critique in that? And the problem with unmasking critique then is that you don't really talk to the other, you just say your opinions are based on bad faith or uh being duped by whatever it is so in in a way is, is, is critique a problem because it erodes uh, those those particular clear ideas and commitments yeah, but then you're talking about everyone being critics again rather mm. than critique i think because that's what we were saying a little while back that uh, someone just accusing you of um, mm. uh, you know killing animals um that uh, that is um being critical and mm. and taking a position where you feel that you are or that other person is uh, feels uh, themselves to be <coughs> better in various ways but mm. again i think that is quite different from because uh, if that person was ready again to see you as maybe a pawn or a dupe or whatever mm. of those larger structures mm. uh, uh, ideological economic uh, all those uh, cultural um, then maybe that would be the starting point of criti uh, critique mm. Yeah, I think that I think what was interesting here, if I, if I if I'm understanding you right, we're sort of deflating critique down from its godlike position to being just a sort of ordinary rumination and reflexivity, and then by and large, by and large, people who are de designating their work as, as a critique of, mm -hmm. you know, they they don't they don't mean to say just I did a lot of rumination and reflexivity. Mm -hmm. And, and I've thought about it a lot. They usually, they usually claim more than that mm. uh, in, or, in, or, in order to take some sort of political advantage. Mm. But um, so is, is it that we need to find the limits of critique and downsize all of these, these, um, uh, these, these extraordinary claims? Mm. Uh, maybe critique needs to retreat to be just ordinary again. Um, yes, and uh, in, a, in a way, I think it's, uh, it's very important not to see, because I think that's a problem with the debates uh, today, that critique has become uh, one thing that is associated with a certain set of thinkers, and, mm. um, and there are certain people who have done it, and, and now people are saying we're not going to be like those people, mm. so it becomes, uh, uh, yeah, this kind of quite, it's both vague and 
too specific at the same time mm. because they've constructed a conception of critique uh, that is way too specific to be to be mm. critical, yeah. I suppose. But then you also need, and I think this is an interesting. Uh, going back for for a moment to the historical development as well, because as I mentioned before, for Kant, this is um, critique was very much. I mean, it started really in in the in, in each individual. But then, as soon as we get to Hegel, then that becomes more of a uh, a way in which we then see, of course, in Marx, it becomes a, a structured way of looking at an engagement for uh, improving. Um, society on on, on, mm. on a large scale, so it becomes uh, more a more organised project in that way. Mm. And I don't know if we take then a huge jump to the present, where where the, the focus on individuals and mm. a, an individual responsibility has almost disabled us from uh, from engaging, from from seeing ourselves not just as co uh, well, from. We don't see ourselves as cogs so much as we see ourselves as having this endless responsibility that make us feel ashamed and guilty for eating animals or flying planes or because as if our individual decisions will will make such a huge difference and if we could uh, if we could harness that uh, in, in a positive way see ourselves as cogs in a system in a mm. positive way that would also mean that we might see uh, find reason to engage on a broader level, engage in whatever po political party we might um, uh, hmm. uh, sympathise with, or, or, or group together and go out on the streets. I don't know. Now I'm being really utopian, but still, <laughs> that there is that. Um, uh, I think we need to find our way back to that sense in which we hmm. are um, individuals as part of a larger structure, and hmm. and it's only then that critique can uh, be critique. The, the I mean what, what you're saying is, is, is really fascinating because then you, you then you begin to say well maybe if we shouldn't if we shouldn't say one critique there isn't a critique with a capital C there's many critiques and there's maybe you know there's we were talking about paranoid thinking and suspicious thinking and conspiracy thinking and and those might be problematic forms of critique and then there might be you know relentless ironic de deconstructive criticism oh it's all made up it's all stories and that, where does that leave you well the pragmatic question in philosophy is like Something only matters in that, as an idea in insofar as it has consequences, mm -hmm. and um, you know um, what so what forms of critique then make a difference to society and politics? Well, those must be ones that are in some way or another connected to doing things differently or pursuing different possible ideals or different sorts of reforms. You know, maybe pursuing revolution might be one of them. I'm not sure that sometimes has mixed results or something but you know reforming critiques rather than th rather than tremendously demanding uh total change or something like that and then i don't know forms forms of critique which are you know maybe less recognized by us or something like th forms of critique which say something like well um you know couldn't couldn't we have couldn't we have better connections or you know critiques that, that, that come with a warm and fuzzy glow about them or something or some, mm. some, something like that so is this potentially one way of kind of combating the the challenge that critique is this big monolithic force and it is the single philosophical method and all of the kind of eurocentric heritage of that thinking is thinking pl more pluralistically about critique one mm. response to those kind of challenges well, I think one, one we could start up from where we are right here, right now, and we, we come from two different disciplines, sociology mm. and, and literature, and critique has um, been used to describe partly different um, mm. theoretical efforts. Uh, and, and I think we've established that we, th they have the same uh, starting points to some extent, mm -hmm. but they're also... Uh, different practices that apply differently to different types of um, contexts. Mm. So, so yes, of course there must be different critiques mm. uh, rather than one critique. Yeah. Uh, There's a, I mean, I've already done Eurocentricism here because I've done Greece and Israel, even though that's really the edges of, 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 of Europe. There is, um, I think it's Tala Lassar, I by the, the correct name who has this interesting book with uh, Judith Butler in which she says well look at the Islamic sources of, of critique and you know look, look at those different forms and I, I'm from Ireland and people there do claim occasionally that there's a different form of, 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 of criticism in 
in, 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 in its poetry and in, in, in its political tradition, mm. such as that exists at mm. all, or that we have records of it. I've been thinking that perhaps what's happening now can also be compared to um, a, a critique that uh, feminists had back in the uh, 90s where, um, I don't know um, how familiar everyone is with this, but there was a, one of the, the, the largest topics of uh, humanities studies was the question of the subject. Uh, who is the subject, deconstruct the subject, uh, etc. A real strong questioning of the nature of the subject, which was important. And feminists said, oh, isn't this funny that just when, when women are actually gaining that subject position, that's when we have to start critiquing it and deconstructing it. And then mm. eventually there were ways of developing theories, that are strong feminist theories that, that could make good use of that critique of the subject. But still there was that sense in which Oh, bec just because you guys have always had the subject position now feel that you need to question it. And, mm -hmm. and I wanted to, to maybe just test that comparison with the crisis in critique today in a way because I've also noted that there are several people working in um, various, working with the resistance movements in um, South America or mm -hmm. in um, Palestine and um, people who said who have been quite upset with, with people as, like us talking about uh, the crisis in critique because mm. they feel like they're, they're doing fantastic, important work where they are actually gaining some tractions. I mean, we might not see it because it's not on, mm. but, but, but there are still uh, quite active uh, efforts of critique that might not fit into our Eurocentric mm. conception of it. No. So this might be important to keep in mind that, yeah, maybe there is a crisis in the way we've been using it or looking at it, but there are other things that we mm. might not see. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think um, it's interesting when you, when, you, when you look at the history of, of, of words and concepts and master concepts, like in, uh, in, in the Romantic era, I suppose, um, people the, the meaning and the value attached to words like sensibility and rationality, they, they wavered back and forth, and every now and then, you know, there's a sort of mass, you know, rejection of reason and rationality, and yet here we are today, mm. and 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 those are still, <laughs> you know, I mean, we, the, if there is a if there is a globe to look back in a hundred years' time to say, look at that, they had a problem with critique back in the <laughs> early 2020s or something like that. It was, you know, and then they they they, they had that classic work, and then they realised that they were all wrong, and then they were post critic critic or something like that, and they have some mm. fancy words, and they look back and they say, well, they just had a problem with their vocabulary. They're trying to talk about different things or something like that. But I think that the, the crisis of critique um, comes, and this is this is I mean this is I suppose reflecting that I'm from sociology. The strong feeling in sociology, I suppose, was that critique had been co-opted and stolen uh, by by others to whom they, th who weren't doing it right as such. That advertisers uh, were borrowing critique to sell us clothes and and, and soft drinks. Um, that managers were borrowing critique to uh, somehow or other persuade their workers that they were working in a really cool and edgy firm and mm -hmm. you only had a six month contract, but it was cool and you were free or something mm -hmm. like that. And, th and that sort of co-opting of critique uh, by capitalism. And also it's you know, much more apparent today, I think, is, is, is the sense that critique is in crisis because it's been politically co-opted. Uh, co you know? I mean, mm -hmm. who does critique nowadays? Everybody, including the alt-right, the feminists, <coughs> the neo-Nazis, the fascists, and they, they talk about you know, they, they, they borrow the same sort of con conspiratorial language about, mm -hmm. about, you know, I suppose that we've been talking about so far, the uh, unmasking, the, the conspiracy. They, I mean, there, there's, there's neo-Nazis, the, the Charlottesville in 2017, just after Trump was, they had a Unite the Right r rally, uh, chap turned up at that, and his thing was that he was the radical agenda, and his radical agenda was to stop the genocide in America, which was, moving all the white people out, which is not happening anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not happening, there's no, there's no, this is not a real thing. But he, he said, you know, we're, we're gonna spread these ideas, we're gonna have the free speech, we're gonna have the public uh, stage to say this, which is so, so, so much forbidden to us because we're so radical, they can't handle us. Mm -hmm. These people stealing critique and making it into all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I think is the reason for the crisis in critique. Whether now might be a good time to start taking some questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for your discussion. Um, in a digital time where kind of everyone can be a critic today, and it can be that in a kind of limitless.
public forum wherever they feel like doing that on a daily basis. Everyone can kind of always find an audience for whatever they want to critique and have a debate about. Um, but often they really do that with like-minded people. And kind of what I'm wondering about is how could each of us kind of contribute, where that's the case today, in learning how we adapt to such a conditioning that happens all around us 24-7, which is really unfamiliar, right? We haven't had that in human history, where day to day everyone within this lecture happening can start a debate in the meantime happening <laughs> next to us. That wasn't possible, right, in the last century. Um, so it's still very new to us. So, yeah, how can we contribute to making that better? Yeah, uh, it's, it's a very good question and, and a really important one, of course. And um, I don't have, I can't presume to have a, a perfect answer. I, I would love to save the world right now. But um, uh, I, to me, it seems like a crucial thing is, first of all, to acknowledge this, as you're doing now, to to see that this is a problem, because we might forget. We might forget that it's a problem. We might forget that all that input we get all the time and all those heated discussions are maybe not uh, where we should be uh, directing our attention. Maybe we should not. And I mean, to I don't know, uh, a few maybe concrete uh, suggestions would be to just like, don't get your news from Facebook. You know, like don't like subscribe to a few magazines you know, read like and, and, and including some coming from a um, uh, fr from a different hmm. political perspective than what you might um, sympathise with. I mean, I know it's 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 banal, perhaps, but uh, but but I do think, and, and some are some people have been suggesting that this whole like thing where we're all on social media all the time might just pass. We might actually. Uh, at least I don't know what it's like here, but in Sweden, quite a few have gone like, I'm tired of that. I'm gonna go back to reading my paper in the morning. You know that it's been so, especially for for our generation, where it's been uh, a new thing. So it's been so so very exciting. Um, but anyway, that 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 sense in which we, because I think this is really when our idea of ourselves as rational subjects uh, have been taken a blow, where we be, we kind of pulled into this. Uh, constant, um, I don't know, stimulation that it's stops us from Isn't it precisely thinking? like what you were saying about the potluck? Because it's like if you have in your pocket at any moment a whole audience to argue with, then you're, then you're every thought, you're every, you're, you're the, that, that boundary, and it was always a construct, this boundary or whatever, and it was always problematic in various ways, but your, your whole life becomes a constant publicness, and that mm -hmm. means that you're constantly exposed to sort of a demand for critique, or the expo you're exposed to the possibility of being critiqued mm -hmm. at, a, at any moment. So it's, it's a, an unlimiting, as you were saying, anyway. It is, uh, and all, but still can't maybe not very productive or do much for you or the other people, because it's just, it's very, it looks uh, sincere perhaps, but it's just, a, it's constant. I mean, maybe you're, you're exhausted. Like if you've been arguing with people on Twitter all day, maybe you're not going to be reading that book about, I don't know, Kant. Oh, not Kant, you don't have to read Kant. Let's take another question, I think there's one up there. You, you've been talking a lot about um, critique and crisis, and now what I find very funny is that the words crisis and critique are both derived from the Greek krinane. Um, so, and krinane means to determine, to differentiate, to separate things, and crisis was originally, I, I think, I, I, I don't know what exactly, but I think it meant something like, I don't know, a moment in which things get determined, like decisive moment, something like that. So <laughs> it seems as if there can't be any critique without crisis. So any critique is always in crisis because it points towards a crisis. Or otherwise, like the other way around, perhaps crisis just means, or if we perceive something as crisis, it means that we think we always need to de determine something. Something needs to be differentiated right now or judged or separated. So is this perhaps also an illusion? Do we always need to determine things? Um, yeah, or can there be a critique without crisis? I mean, didn't, didn't Kant, it's, it's interesting because I mean, on the one hand, etymologically, yeah, that is, that is spot on. Uh, but the interesting thing is, is, do, is and of course, how, how do we know, how do we determine this? But isn't it Kant who said, you know, uh, we live, it, it, today's the great age of critique and to critique everything must submit. And I don't know, did Google do a nice little graph of how often these words are used? So the word, pop, and there's different meanings to them, but you know, to, to, to the, there's, there's an almost, it's a growth industry, as it were, you know, uh, unmasking, critique, deconstruction. It's really, it's, 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 it's more and more frequent and now, um, 
and that's a very crude measure, but if you look at um, where, do, where do we give training and critique, it used to be, what, you know, a final year uh, undergrad or something like that, but now it's first year and now we are into schools and, uh, you know, in kindergartens, people must be given uh, critical thinking. So, you know, maybe, maybe, yes, it was always thus to a certain extent that there's some sort of amount of critique, but only in times of crisis or only now and then, but now all the time, like the, the phone in the pocket and the public mm. sphere in the pocket, always crisis, always critique. Mm. I think that's exhausting, yeah. And I think there is something fundamentally, I mean, it's important and quite beautiful about that connection between crisis and critique, because it means the way, the way I see it is also because if we are, if we take that seriously, then we see that uh, our, our, the responsibility we are given as subjects of any society at any one time must be uh, to, to realize that we are faulty thinkers, but we have to keep trying. It is a crisis in that we haven't got, we can't um, rely on anyone else to, to know better necessarily. We have to keep, uh, or to tell us the truth. It would be so nice, uh, Khan talks about that as well, how, how lazy we tend to be, how, how comfortable it is to, to subscribe to uh, someone else's truth. So, so that it is a crisis. It's hard work to be, <laughs> uh, to both get that responsibility of critical thinking, and to know that you're never going to do it well enough, but you have to keep trying. So, so yes, I think it's not a problem, but a possibility with a combination of crisis and critique. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I just want to add to the previous uh, person who asked the question. Maybe we should uh, approach critique from different perspective. Perhaps critique is a part of the nature, our human nature and nature as a whole. Uh, Heraclitus, a uh, Greek philosopher, says, Pantarei, everything is moving. Perhaps without the criti critique, we wouldn't be able to move. Uh, we can observe this on our individual development as a child. Children have natural curiosity. They said that children are philosophers, natural philosophers. And of course, then during the development, we can achieve the higher stage, which is a critique, somehow more conscious, critical approach to life and everything around us. And the same as a humanity, we are developing from the early stages of criticizing everything to the critique, Kant, and of course, uh, we have lots of things to, to develop more. So it's part of our nature. It's like a driving force to move, to develop, to to another stage of our being. It um, would be good to, to keep, uh, keep with that thought. I mean, it seems like you lose, almost lose hope sometimes because it seems like some, some are quite comfortable uh, um, not challenging themselves or, or others. Well, I think most people are comfortable challenging others, but not themselves so much, perhaps. Um, but, uh, but I think you're right, U ultimately, if we all um, c could see that as part of uh, who we are rather than as being a particular kind of person um, and that it's, uh, it's absolutely necessary for, for ourselves as individuals and as society and mm. history to proceed um, to, to have that. It's a driving force, mm. if that's what you're suggesting. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting because I, I, I think, I mean, I don't know about nature, but, you know, um, because I mean, do 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 ants criticize? Do you know? Nature is a crisis. A crisis is in within nature. It was said that mm. critique is connected to crises, and when you, we know the history of humanity, the world, they were, mm. they are. We can notice they were crises during this process evolved. Mm. Yeah. I suppose I mean it's it's interesting because it's like we, we we couldn't we couldn't disagree that thought is necessary, but would it have to be critical thought and what sort of thought what, what sort of critical thought would be useful and and and, and, and positive and so how much of it could be potentially negative because we're, we're obviously looking at the downside so there must be some way in which there must uh we must make some distinctions in in, in this way but you're, you're right there's no there is no way out of thinking you know so we have to in this way take responsibility for ourselves well um again thank you for very much for the discussion today um you know, perhaps it's a little ironic that tonight is the first time I've ever stopped to thought, stopped to question the idea of critique. 
Um, my, my question, or the thing I'm curious about is, um, is critique necessarily um, positivistic in its approach? In other words, is there necessarily some kind of truth to be unmasked through critique? It's, that's a lovely question. I really appreciate that because um, I can see why you would ask that. But most, uh, at least uh, in, in the past 100 years or so, I think would say that it's absolutely not positivistic. Um, that that the whole that's exactly its point in a way that there is no there isn't a truth out there or under there or whatever when mm -hmm. we are masking that we can hope to find and that again is why critique needs to be a, a constant feature because it's about getting closer to it rather than uh, finding it um, f for good uh, in a way so so in that sense and maybe that is an important distinction as well that we can make between those. You've been talking a lot about mm. those um, sort of um, types of critique that have been co-opted by yeah. different politics and all that. That that it's it's quite essential to keep that doubt mm. as 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 a starting point. It's interesting because it's it's in a, it's in a way it it okay most uh, most academic versions of critique are not are not na naively positivistic, but on the other hand, they do tend to sort of. Um, have an idea of, of, of error or falsity or myth or ideology or something like that at heart of them. So they're always moving away from these things, but ne not necessarily arriving at uh, a, you know a, a positivistic model mm. of, of, of of the truth. But they're moving away, and this is again another sort of negativity. And maybe I'm. Well, I don't think it has to be. I, I I'm thinking of. Samuel Beckett, failing better. Mm. You have to keep trying, and you're going to fail, but you can fail maybe better next time. That there is something uh, of, uh, and that is actually, um, I mean, it seems, I think, quite silly to speak of positive and negative, but there is still the idea of mm. failing better is kind of a positive one, mm. not a positivist one, <laughs> yes. by the way. But surely it makes the relationship between um, critique and liberation <coughs> or emancipation much more difficult to negotiate because if you if if you think about kind of modern critique the, the idea that there was some kind of truth to be unmasked and in that unmasking some <laughs> someone is liberated or something becomes clear that enables something if you then move to a, a postmodern model if you like where um, there is no clear truth to be unmasked then it seems much more difficult to map the kind of emancipatory potential of that doesn't it I don't think so. I know that, that uh, there are um, a lot of people who would say that, but I certainly wouldn't, because it seems to me that there is no contradiction in trying, so say, emancipation, whether it's um, uh, women or people of color or, or working class, uh, whatever perspective you want to take, or all of them for that matter. Uh, if, if we believe that there was a point in which that has been perfected, I mean, that would be like kind of the truth or the ultimate. Like that, that then we're we're finished. We're done. We have the perfect society. Um, that we might, I, even if we don't think that we will come to that point, that doesn't prevent us from feeling that it's absolutely crucial that we keep trying. Right? Mm. We have to keep trying for the best of possible worlds, um, even if it's never going to be uh, perfect. And I see this, uh, that that striving towards. Uh, truth or as close to truth as we can get as as the same thing it's not about denying truth or it's like it doesn't matter that's the kind of caricature of postmodernist postmodern theory in a way that oh it's all relative mm. and it doesn't really matter we can say whatever we want that's that's not it at all but it's rather about because we know it's very hard to get at we need to make sure that we get as full a picture of it as we can and then we need to take in all these different perspectives and problematize it and unmask mm. it in, in different ways. I mean, isn't it, isn't it less about a positivistic epistemic view of the truth as in a good scientific map of reality um, as it is toward a matter of moving towards ideals? I mean, you could have you know, a, great, a, uh, a great but immoral or um, intolerable um, and perfectly rational and perfectly perfect survival strategy for the climate catastrophe we're facing in which you don't really care about everybody else but usually in critique it's it's not a matter of moving to new zealand or moving to a bunker or something like that it's not it's not about the facts and the um 
the, the it, 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 it's 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 surely about about ideals again. So I mean, I think the critique doesn't cannot cannot pres, uh, doesn't have to have a positivistic horizon, but in order for it to be anything anything better than deconstructive postmodernism, and I know it, that, that's a caricature again, mm -hmm. but the, that relentless unmasking or the negative critique, it has to have an ideal to orient to, mm -hmm. and and so we back to the positive and the positivist mm -hmm. again, but yeah. And maybe this is a time to say also that, I mean, I feel like I've taken the position here of being the, the defender, the, the of, critique. defender of critique, uh, but of course, uh, and, and, I, and I think I, I, I'm happy with that, but there is still, of course, it's, there are different ways of doing critique, uh, just as there are mm. different postmodern theories, and I'm not suggesting that it's all, like, all of it is, uh, is good, uh, and that, that's not my point at all, mm. and of course there are those who are relentlessly negative uh, or negativistic in, the, in a way that is not productive or who are so relativistic that nothing becomes mm. possible and that's not the ideal. I mean, you, mm. again, it's, I think it's, it's a very important point that came up now in response to this question that we need to, um, th it needs to be about us striving towards something mm. better or closer to, mm. to good or closer to truth. To the truth. Uh, firstly, a very big thank you for coming out to talk to us tonight. Uh, I wanted to build on a notion that was talked about, the fact that critique is something that keeps humanity moving, uh, especially if considering what you've just talked about just now, um, the sense of what do we do in a situation where this unmasking has happened, the critique has been applied, and it's more or less universally acknowledged to be truthful or positive in, in a sense, but is neglected. And the most prominent situation of this would be the climate change scenario. Not the tragedy of critique or something like that. But, and of course, we can go back to something like saying quite easily, as I'm sure most of us in this room agree, that the climate skepticism is, <laughs> is, 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 is a not good can I, am I allowed to curse? Anyway, you know, um, it, it's not a good version of critique, but it, the, the tragedy of critique is, is, is critique is so easily, well, not so easily, but it has been unfortunately uh, imitated and put to other uses. And uh, rather, rather than just only delivering to us ideals or liberation or mm. equality, it has also delivered to us, you know, confusion, relativism, and uh, an antagonistic public sphere. So does that mean that we're, you know, we need to do critique better or something. Um, I'm not sure. Am I the, am I am I the attacker against critique? That the reformer of critique or something like that, or the, I don't know. I have a sort of tragic view of critique that uh, eventually, eventually, the, the result of critique, um, if you follow it in a certain way, is that, you know, we are on a planet made out of dust and we will eventually go extinct and we are just a load of chemicals and therefore nothing means anything. So you may as well enjoy yourself or something like that. But there's certainly no meaning to any of these relationships that we have in any in, in, in any way. But you know, so what? So what? Um, but tragically, tragically, the results of the critique are, are very mixed. I, I just realized, which uh, I'm, I'm kind of ashamed to realize that we're talking about critique for nearly one and a half hour, and we haven't mentioned the word power even once, I don't think, which mm. is quite shocking. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> and, and, and the reason why I think of it now, I think, is be because of this question, because, uh, yes, if it, there, there is... we. At, at all points, there is the question of what, whose, whose interest is it? In whose interest is it to, 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 to question a particular uh, fact or a particular mm. viewpoint? And that there, I mean, again, the climate change question is is kind of the perfect one or a perfect example here because it is on the one hand. Uh, um, not a truth universally, uh, universally acknowledged, as Jane Austen would say, but it's, uh, it's um, um, quite a few of us who, who are quite confident in that climate change is a real thing. But those who, uh, there are so, uh, such strong powers um, interested in denying that and pursuing uh, uh, that those kinds of conspiracy theories or that false type of critique to undermine this this conception uh, and to me it's not so much about believing or not believing it's about the about power and mm -hmm. about why we should or shouldn't uh, subscribe to something and who gets to mm. to decide 
There are a couple of questions towards the back. In the blur up to your theme uh, of tonight, you ask whether it's possible to embrace different ways of thinking. What exactly do you mean by different ways of thinking? Isn't thinking itself, by definition, critical? What is different way? Thank you. And can we take one more as well, please? Yeah. Hi. Thank you very much. It's really interesting. Um, I just want to say, in all this kind of stuff, saying about the uh, stuff about unmasking and all that kind of stuff, that actually it's not about uh, the critique and the kind of how sad that is. What's sad is that we're not allowed to have doubt and all the problems that have come, whether you're talking about climate skeptics or whatever, the critique that they use is that it's not a definitive answer. And what we have to make fashionable again is that nuance and doubt, that's the beautiful thing. That's the beautiful thing. That's the, that's the truth for us, for us to be able to elevate that again. There's nothing more frightening than the people who have complete certainty on their side. And I think historically, the people who have been so certain of everything have caused the, the most amount of trouble and wars and all the rest of it. And at the moment, we've got very populist leaders that are very certain um, about their critique. So I think to what you were saying, the quote from Samuel Beckett, to actually kind of elevate nuance and doubt and actually make that an interesting and beautiful thing for humanity, something that people should be proud of and not, not ashamed of. Wonderful, that's, uh, that's beautifully put, and that's kind of what I was trying to articulate before as well in, in response to this question from the front, that uh, there is something, it's, we, we, we live with, a, um, I think, a, a dangerous idea, again, that we would, that, that we can only act on something if we know for certain and we know the truth, and that doubt is dangerous, and therefore we must subscribe to something, and uh, and that, uh, in that sense, this positivist idea, uh, I mean, most people accuse uh, postmodernist theorists or others uh, for, for or, or doubt people in doubt for, uh, for undermining the possibility for change. But as you say, there, um, to me, it seems like that is the opening to change as well. Yeah. Absolutely. And as for the other question, I don't know if we can think differently from uh, I don't know if you have I, 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 just, I mean it depends because I mean on the one hand we could say that all thinking is critique because we're making judgments and making perceptions at certain but there are we could surely distinguish between you know um, thinking which is more interpretive it's about understanding culture and understanding meaning or something like that and then critique would be more involved in judging and, and, and sort of more it could be a harsher kind of I don't know is that a, a, a well standing decision but also Ultimately, even though we have our doubts, there's also that sort of thinking which is, you know, um, there's, there's a kind of emotional embrace of, cer of, of certain things, that we have, we have convictions, you know. Um, I don't think it's, it's, it's not easy to be involved in politics without having a conviction that your way is in some way the right or good. So, I mean, I, I, as I was saying, I do welfare reform and unemployment. I have, you know... I could, I, could, I could spend a lot of time criticizing myself, and I, I do spend a certain amount of time, certainly in doubt, but eventually I have to turn up and say, this is how it is, and thump the table and say, you know, um, and so th th that, that kind of thought, so maybe affirmative thinking, or um, that, that sort of turn towards emotion. But even, even then, if, if you think about the way in which we relate to politics, we criticize people, and um, Sometimes then they become our enemies, and this is maybe back to this unmasking, this antagonism. But maybe there's a better way to, 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 to relate to that, in which we acknowledge that you know, um, people believe things for their reasons. They've grown up believing these sort of things. And if we simply criticize them, well, then we're just going to have, have an, an entrenched arms race of critique. Whereas if you, go, on the other hand, say to people, I know why you think this. I understand. And that's a bit patronizing already. But still, mm -hmm. I understand you think this, and these are your values, and ultimately this, that, or the other. How could, how, could we, how could, let us say us on the liberal left or something, make friends with the uh, American Christian right in the South or something like this? How could that be possible? Well, will, will, we, will we enlighten them? Will we criticize them until they it is exposed to them how stupid they are? In some way or another, you must you must you must be, be able to find common ground with them. And if you if if you uh, you could probably quote the Bible to them and point out that actually they are not in they are not in favor of inequality in the Bible. See, you know, or something like that. That 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 that, could, that might work. I don't know. Um, I think that a dream of uh, uh, critique would also be the possibility of not just the 
deciding who's right, but to have those kinds of constant conversations mm. where you have to not just try to win the argument, but to, as mm. you say, t to listen, to engage, to try, really try to understand rather than just dismiss other people's mm. uh, opinions and viewpoints. And also, again, as you say, lift them to a, a higher level What is not just about that individual being stupid, mm. but about a whole society in which the, the, the background, the ideology, the culture, whatever, has affected them, um, as they have, uh, of course, mm. yourself. So again, you need to take that into account as well. But ultimately, it's, uh, it's thinking together. And yeah, again, you need to do that with the people you don't agree with as well, mm. of course. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think that's a nice note to finish on. Uh, we are out of time. Thank you very much for coming. Do join us next week when we are talking about peace. Um, and join me in, in thanking our speakers.